You're watching News Desk. Thank you very much for your company. If you just tune in, you're welcome to the program. But uh, we're done with our conversation around Kolebu and matters arising there, if you'd like to call it that. Let's move away from that now. Talk about safety on our roads. You recall that a driver and vehicular, vehicle license and authority is served notice. It will affect September 2014, not register new vehicles, vehicles meant for public passenger services, uh, which are without seat belts fitted to each seat. Besides the DVLA, will from March 2015 not renew the roadworthiness of commercial vehicles which do not have seat belts fitted to each seat. Acting Chief Executive of the DVLA, Rudolf Beckley, said the decision not to register commercial vehicles with, without seat belts was in conformity with Section 119 of the Road Traffic Regulation Legislative Instrument 2180. So we decided to go to town. September 2014 is around the, in the, around the corner, so it's March 2015. So we decided to go out, find out from the drivers, the commercial drivers, and the passengers, the passengers especially. Are you willing to sit at the back of a trotter and put on a seat belt? Listen. VLA says uh, by September this year it will not register new commercial vehicles without seat belts fitted into their seats. And uh, from next year, March, it will also not renew the roadworthiness of the commercial vehicles that are already in operation and so they will not be allowed to operate anymore. But what do drivers and even passengers make of this new uh, directive from the DVLA? I'll be finding are from some passengers and some drivers what they make of uh, this particular issue. There's a bus here that actually has uh, seat belts, but um, clearly the, the uh, passengers are not using the seat belts. I've been finding out from them why they think it's not necessary for them to use the seat belts. Good morning. Um, you're live on Joy News on Multi TV. Uh, you first tell us your name and then tell us why you are not in seat belts, even though. Um, there are seat belts in the bus. My name is Jeffrey Ado. <clears throat> uh, I'm a driver who applied uh, Kumasi in Accra. What I can say is that seat belt is not a solution. The problems of we, the drivers, is not a seat belt. Seat belt is a choice. A passenger can fasten seat belt or decide not to do it. Fine. But what the problem is. It's the road that we are using. The roads are not good, and then we manage to, to apply it. If the government want to know, if the government want to, to reduce accident, you should reduce accident through educating drivers. Most of drivers doesn't know all, all, all things, but if police and the road safety people can be, be on the road educating drivers frequently. Then, maybe in a few years' time, we may not need any police on the road. We may not need any road safety person on the road. But, but, but most drivers go to uh, driving schools before they are given the license. Driving school. Anyway, driving school is driving school. But you cannot get all the experience from driving school. You get experience when you apply road, when you are on the road. So if education can go on frequently, then we can educate ourselves. Not somebody to direct and not somebody to say something before we do. Do you think this is a step to the education that you want? Um, now they want uh, passengers to put on their seat belts. And if you as a driver, you don't think it's necessary, uh, then uh, where do they start with the education? Uh, passengers putting on seat belts. Fine, it's okay. But you cannot force passenger to put on seat belt. If the passenger wants to put on, he can put it on or she can put it on. But if the driver cannot insist that the passenger should uh, definitely put on seat belt, you can, you can announce it. But if he doesn't do it, how can you do? You can't do anything. Now, it's, it's, it's per the law, according to the DVLA. They just want to enforce a law that has already been in existence. Um, probably you, you may not know, but now they want to enforce it. And so if you don't have it, they will not renew your roadworthiness. What do you have to say about that? And that means that they shouldn't bring in these home second-hand cars. They have to, they have to, we have to buy new, new cars. Because new cars have seat belts. Like you can see these ones. All the seats have seat belts. 
But if you are bringing in a, a home second-hand car, whereby if the car got to a harbor, they cut off all the seatbelt to tighten, fasten, fasten their goose, and there is no seatbelt in the car, means that that car will not work. And in Ghana, we are not all people have money to buy new cars. So, so what is it? Uh, you see, they should, they should do it in such a way that at least everybody can have uh, at, at least uh, uh, his, his way of, of comply with the law, but not to impose the law on everybody. Because not you. For your safety. Yes, our safety, fine, I know. But if, if you cannot feed your, your, your son or your daughter at home, and then you don't allow your daughter to go out, and then your daughter is at home looking for food to eat, what do you want the person to do? You see? So if you can feed your daughter, then if you apply laws at home, the law can work. Thank yeah. you very much. Let me speak to uh, one of your passengers uh, to know what he also makes of this new directive. Uh, tell us your name. You are live on Joy News and what you make of this new directive. My name is Kinsley Watson. And what I'll say about the sweet bed is that mostly some of the car doesn't have it. What I'll say about that. So when we are going to Kumasi and we pick a car, if you want a, seat, a car with a seat belt, you go for the bus. If you don't like it, you take the sprinters. But this one has seat belts, but you as a passenger, you don't have your seat belts on. It's my choice. I like, if I like it, I'll use it. If I don't like it, I'll leave it. I am not the only one who is thinking that the National Road Safety Commission, uh, the DVLA itself, the Ghana Police Service, uh, in, including the uh, motor traffic, department have a lot of work to do anyway uh, transport minister jifati has been responding to some of this she's reacted to the new directive to take effect from september 2014. she also reacted to our bid in getting an abuse an, an, an airline listen the use of seat belts has become compulsory by the passage of the LI 2180, yeah. which was done by Parliament in 2012. Mm -hmm. So we're working with timelines to ensure that this law works in our country. You know, when the laws are passed, you cannot just implement it immediately because you mm -hmm. need to go through some processes, education, you strategize how the implementation will be. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we have a lot of vehicles in our system which don't even have seat belts, so you cannot enforce that immediately. But what DVLA, the Driver Vehicle and Licensing Authority, is doing is to make sure that from September 1st, all vehicles that will be imported into the country are fitted with seat belts. If it's not fitted with seat belt, DVLA will not register them. Mm -hmm. That's the first one. Those that are in the system which don't have seat belts, there's a program to to enable the vehicle owners to have seat belts fitted on them. Mm. That will become operational from March next year. Okay. The DVLA is working to select specific garages that will be trained, the, the, the operators will be trained to to fix the the, the seat belts. You don't just take your vehicle to any garage for seat belts to be fitted. Mm. So that will become operational from March next year. Currently, we are expanding the arrival hall, and this should be ready before Christmas. It will be ready before Christmas. We're also going to uh, build a new terminal, which is Terminal 3, um, towards, uh, at the area towards Accra, towards Avgo area. Let me mm. just say Avgo area. Yeah, so the procurement process is ongoing now. We have done a lot at the Kumasi airport. You know, we used to have some challenges, the cracks and all that. We have almost completed that project. And the interesting thing for Kumasi is that when all the work is complete, there will be night flights. Currently, you cannot fly by night. Mm. We will start the installation of the ground lighting by the middle of August, and we expect to finish before uh, Christmas. Um, we have already done quite a lot on the extension, and we've also installed uh, a landing instrument to guide the pilot. You know, mm. most of the time, when there's a foggy fog around, 
the airport, the flights are not able to either take off or land. But this system will guide the pilot to land uh, accurately. Mm. So that's an improvement on the on the Kumasi airport. Anyway, so then uh, we move away from the transport sector. Let's talk about something that's got to do with you and I. Hopes of participants and invited guests to the maiden edition of Joy News's flagship program, We the People, were dashed when in a bizarre turnaround, the Afuti Municipal Chief Executive, Niafrim, called off the program without prior notice. We call them for them to stop coming. And uh, uh, we explain to them when you come back to us so that uh, by to be, to be in the interest of the assembly, in the very huge interest of the assembly and all of us, to adjourn the program for today. We are already here, in fact. Good. Oh, what you said like, about 15 people from Canada? No, they are here. I said, I have to carry about 15 people from Accra. Ah, uh, oh, I didn't, I didn't hear you with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, my cameramen, my technicians, my sound men, my lighting uh, guys, my director, my peers, I have to put them all in a car. I, I wouldn't mind. And carry them. I wouldn't mind helping you to carry them back. I wouldn't mind. Take it from me. I'm yeah, but, and I'm at number two. When we, when we are leaving the church, uh, the some people have already come, that they're coming for the program. Um, in fact, that is also thought of. Mm -hmm. You have to send some people there. And the uh, information van also to go around and tell them the program has been postponed. You know, uh, we, 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 we normally we, we understand. So that uh, we organize for next week, Tuesday. I have a concern, and that is what guarantee do I have that the next time I bring it to oh, so be with all respect. someone else that's missing? So that with all respect. In fact, there is any program in the house, the head of the, the house will definitely have to take the program. I'm taking it, and uh, I want to assure you. Not that I wasn't interested in this one, but because we have been given some tidbits where we don't know we have fraud here, we have fraud here, we have fraud here. We make sure we put all these things in good understanding before you come in, and it will not go beyond next week or two. I assure you. I'm very upset. <laughs> you are sure. like, you know, in my heart because you are not even very much. We have cancelled some programs to make the time to air this. We have come around on, on Friday and we, 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 we have. Like we are saying, all that. All that. The president member wasn't, wasn't aware. That is the issue. That is the major issue. Yes. If he were to be aware. He wouldn't have slated the examinations for this morning. Really? At what point did he decide that he had to call this off, making us travel all the way to Winneba for this? And the presiding member was not aware. What were you doing? Did he not sit through the meeting? Really? Anyway, that'll be all for the uh, on news today at Mesh Day. We'll talk about Warnep's report. Uh, it's released a second quarter early warning and it's telling us that the demonstrations we've seen in the country could degenerate into a revolution. We'll deal with that matter on news so they make time to watch me. But thank you very much for your company. Uh, this are my name is Kemini Nyamani Amana. I'll see you again at midday. Goodbye.